So it's no secret that we all have unique personalities and characteristics. But the question then is, what makes something normal? And how do we know what a psychological disorder is? Hello there and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be answering those questions. We're going to start reviewing Unit 8 of AP Psychology. Remember, if you're finding value in any of these topic review videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. In this video, we're going to be going over Unit 8, Topic 1, an introduction to psychological disorders. Going back to the questions that I started off this video with, we can see that the APA has classified a psychological disorder as any condition characterized by a cognitive and emotional disturbances, abnormal behaviors, impaired functioning, or any combination of these. Such disorders can be accounted for solely by environmental circumstances and may involve psychological, genetic, chemical, social, and other factors. Psychological disorders create a disturbance in an individual's life and lead to dysfunctional behaviors. When talking about disorders, we are also going to be learning about how they are diagnosed diagnosed, which is based on a book called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM for short. Today, the current edition of the DSM is the DSM-5. This provides diagnostic criteria to help psychiatrists and psychologists make a diagnosis. The DSM-5 helps provide a standard to make sure that everyone is basing their decisions off the same common understanding of different disorders, which helps make sure that people's diagnosis are reliable and consistent. Before the DSM was created, there was little to no standard consistency to classifying disorders, which led to many people being misdiagnosed. Depending on where and when in history we are looking, we can see that people used to view certain disorders disorders as supernatural forces. People often believe that an individual was being influenced or corrupted by demonic forces, which led, unfortunately, to poor treatment of those with mental health concerns. Today, we can see that organizations such as the World Health Organization have continued to work towards making sure that hospitals and care facilities around the world are set up in a way that is humane and treats patients with respect. And with the help of the DSM-5 and the World Health Organization's Internal Classification of Diseases, or ICD for for short, it makes it easier for people to correctly diagnose psychological disorders all around the world. Plus, as science, medicine, and our understanding of how the mind and body work continue to advance, we gain a better insight into such disorders and different causes that are behind them. Society today has become more understanding and knowledgeable of different psychological disorders. Even the legal system has been updated over the years to account for such disorders. For example, when individuals talk about being insane or sane, these terms are not used in a clinical clinical environment, but rather used in a legal one. For example, in courts you may hear or see insanity defenses, which is when an individual claims they are not responsible for certain actions because of their mental state. Courts often look at an insanity defense in a couple of different ways. One of the ways is using the McNaughton rule, which looks to see if an individual is able to determine right from wrong. This rule focuses on cognitive or moral incapacity of an individual. One thing to note here is that this only applies when the individual committed the crime. At the time of the crime, the individual has to be mentally incapacitated by a mental disorder, which causes them not to understand the impact of their actions. Another defense is the American Law Institute test, which focuses on the moral incapacity and volition of an individual, which tries to see if an individual is able to understand the consequences of their actions. It also looks to see if an individual can control their actions. This is the volition part of the test. So maybe you understand right from wrong, but you lack the ability to control yourself and your actions. For example, an individual may have done an action because of a specific compulsion, which was out of their control. Now, I do want to point out that this is very rare to happen. Very few psychological disorders cause such a high degree of impairment that an individual would lose control of their actions or fail to understand what's right or wrong in the eyes of society. And just like that, the first topic review video of Unit 8 is done. Now comes the time to practice what we've learned, answer the questions on the screen right now, and check your answers in the comment section down below. If you found value in this video, of course, consider subscribing and check out my ultimate review pack. It's a great resource that'll help get you an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you next time online.